All right. Um, this is going to be a, uh, a basic uh, video regarding uh, the nav mesh bounds volume and making sure it's set up right to uh, navigate within. Um, so I'm just going to import some basic geometry um, that I have set up to, uh, to demo this. Um, and when you bring in your, um, your project for the first time, uh, you're going to want to go to the lit button and then check player collision. And you're going to um, probably notice right away that you've got some things to change. So for instance, I have this giant you know, cube surrounding my space. So what I need to do is to change the collision type of this space. Uh, collision is generally going to default to a very simple mesh. And in this case, in the static mesh editor, I can go to the show button and turn on simple collision. And this green wireframe is going to tell you um, or show you why I'm seeing a solid blue cube instead of a, uh, a three-sided box, basically. Um, so uh, just for performance reasons, collision is, um, like I said, meant to be as simple as possible. Um, but for our purposes, we need something more specific in this case. So I'm going to uncheck show simple collision and I'm going to come down into the details and under collision, I'm going to go to collision complexity and change this to use complex collision as simple. So now if I go to collision, sorry, if I go to show and I turn on complex collision, you'll see it's a different color line and it's uh, it's actually wrapping tightly to the geometry which means that if I go into my scene now and we look at player collision it's uh, indicating um, uh, that uh, I no longer am going to be blocked I'll be able to actually walk into this space um, so you know this wall is another good example of that there's a doorway um, when we look at it in this view mode but in player collision uh, it's filled in and that's again because um, of this simple collision setup so if we look at that 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 green bounding box is actually going through um, or you know covering the uh, the doorway so same same exact uh, setup we need to go down to collision complexity and change it to use complex simple and now when I hop back, you can see I'll be able to actually pass through that. Uh, and then the same with the stairs. So we'll do that real quick. Um, just scroll down, collision complexity, choose the last one, and, uh, and now we're good. So um, once we've established collision, uh, we can set up our nav mesh bounds volume. By the way, if you're using DataSmith, um, I don't believe collision is enabled by default. Uh, you might have the option to enable it uh, when you import, but it might not actually be there. Um, if that's the case, you're going to have to add collision. And the way you do that is you open up the, uh, the mesh and you go up to the collision menu and you can choose to add sphere or capsule or box uh, collision and it'll add it in. Um, and then the rest of the steps are the same. Okay, so now that I've got collision set up, I need to go to place actors and um, do a search for nav mesh bounds volume, drag that in. And uh, if I hit the P key, we can see that that green um, uh, you know, uh, color is indicating where we are going to be able to um, teleport. So I'm going to place that approximately here. It doesn't have to be all that precise. In fact, um, the nav mesh is very good at not being precise. And that's what I want to talk about now. So um, let's scale this guy up so we can get to the second floor. And you'll quickly uh, realize as you work with this, and I'm going to turn off snapping so I can move a little smoother. You'll quickly realize uh, with nav mesh bounds volumes, um, you're you're basically going to go for good enough. Uh, there's no there's no like super precision uh, with these. Um, 
And so you see these like gaps around the walls and around the stair and everything. Um, and that is uh, all being controlled by this thing called a recast nav mesh. So you have the nav mesh bounds volume and then you have recast. Um, and recast is what we're going to use to adjust our settings to make things work a little better. Um, just a quick note, uh, sometimes you're going to want to block um, uh, teleportation um, uh, even though there's no geometry there. And this nav mesh, uh, nav modifier volume is really good at that. So you can just place this um, volume anywhere in your project. And if it's an area that you don't want people to be able to teleport um, into, just place that there and it'll, it'll uh, call the, uh, the nav mesh. Um, so uh, getting back to these settings, um, you're noticing that the stairs aren't being picked up um, and uh, we've got some giant gaps around the walls so there's um, this I don't know it's it's not super clean the way it's set up but uh, basically when you select the recast nav mesh um, there's an area of settings that you want to look at specifically under generation and these uh, many times will do the job just fine you can also go to edit and project settings and go down to um, navigation and in here you will I deleted the previous one uh, that was left over from an earlier project um, in here you will find a lot of the same settings um, so you'll go to where it says agents click that plus sign and open this up and uh, in here these settings are very similar in terms of agent radius and height and all of that um, and in my experience is they they kind of override what happens here um, but before we dive into this I'm just gonna look uh, at these settings so um, uh, you can adjust uh, these properties um, um, fairly fairly uh, easily I'm gonna drop the uh, cell size down to three and you can instantly see uh, my stairs are now being uh, noticed right now um, cell height we get down here is um, if I increase this let's say I put it to 50 it's actually gonna move the whole nav mesh itself up which we don't want. Um, I don't believe that's actually going to hurt anything um, or stop us from navigating, but um, I'd like to get that a little bit closer to the floor. So if we drop that down to like, uh, oops, not 5, but 55, um, it just keeps it, you know, a little bit closer to the floor. And then um, our agent radius, if we drop this down to say like 5, why does my need a new keyboard um, you can see when I drop my agent radius down it goes tight to the wall um, so this works pretty well uh, I think we'll go with this um, sometimes you're gonna have to play with the slope um, so for instance uh, if I drop the slope down to 10 um, and in this case uh, it's it's kind of behaving um, sometimes you'll have to increase the slope to get it to recognize uh, angles a bit more um, the other thing you'll notice is it's kind of dipping into this side of the staircase if I was to uh, select those stairs and just move this over you can see how it it sort of um, corrects itself it presents another issue um, with this sort of like fold which has no uh, effect whatsoever um, on uh, whether it works or not um, just like this doesn't either um, and that's kind of what I was saying earlier is that the nav mesh is kind of it works on the good enough principle um, really um, and so this is all we really need so when I have that uh, in place I'm gonna grab uh, my VR pawn so I'll go to the VR template go down to blueprints and drag my VR pawn 
in and I want to make sure to go over and in the details set auto possess player to player zero. So with that in place and with everything else working um, as it should in Oculus, we can uh, hit play and check it out. All right, so if I want to teleport around, I can do so. And if I want to go up the stairs, I can go up the stairs. Cool. All right, uh, on to the next video.